My name is Martin Taylor. I'm the current chairman of the Bury St Edmunds Society, a civic society of the town. I've written several books on Bury St Edmunds and my love of Bury St Edmunds is unchallengeable. Well, Edmund was an Anglo-Saxon king from Saxony. He was in fact not destined ever to be king of East Anglia, but Offa, not to be confused with Offa of Offa's Dyke fame, was going on a pilgrimage to uh, the Holy Land and he met young Edmund on his way there. Unfortunately for Offa, he died on the way back and he'd already pronounced Edmund as his successor and Edmund was to follow this up so that in 855 he was crowned at Bewers, which is on the Essex-Suffolk border. Edmund, being a devout Christian king, he fought an unsuccessful battle against the Danes at Thetford, which is 12 miles north of here, and he would end up fleeing south to where, where we now think his royal palace was near Bradfield Combust. The theory of Hoxon had been traipsed out so many times, doesn't bear credence now to what we know about it all. So he was captured soon after the battle, and because he was a Christian king, refused to renounce his faith, tied to a tree, and then shot full of arrows like a pincushion. The legend of Edmund and the Wolf is well written, that his head was severed from his body, thrown into the a thicket, and the wolf um, looked after it, until Edmund's followers came looking for it. And uh, a cry of hick, 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 here, 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 was heard from a thicket and they recovered his head. They put it to the body, his followers, and um, it fused miraculously. Well, Bury St. Edmunds, until this event happened, was a, um, a Saxon township called Beodericksworth. And until obviously, um, Edmund was brought here, it was still Beardricksworth. It wasn't until uh, much later on that with a shrine in a uh, church given by uh, King Canute in 1020 that Edmund was actually, was initially called St Edmundsbury. The bur berry bit is also a corruption of the Anglo-Saxon word burr, so it would be a fortified town. So it was the town of St. Edmund. Well, without the name of um, Edmund attached to it, this could be still Be Beodric's worth, couldn't it? Quite easily so. It's very, very important. Um, if you think what the Abbey ruins we've got here, if this, these ruins were still intact as an Abbey church, one of the largest, if not the largest, Romanesque northern church um, in Europe, uh, we wouldn't be the town we are today. We would be a large metropolis, easily uh, the size of Durham, Lincoln or York. Well, the uh, roundabout sculptures are an initiative of the Berry and Bloom, which is a subcommittee of the Berry Society. And as I said, I'm chairman of that, current chairman. And they, we have a very good um, coordinator called Melanie Lesser, who does an incredible amount of work to get sponsors for these roundabouts. The one in Risbygate Street, the one of Edmund, fantastic stainless steel, f shot full of arrows, was designed by a student at the college called Emmanuel O'Brien.